Hey guys, this is Gabe Dimmick from the Baseball Rebellion, and today's swing breakdown is going to be of Yankees outfielder Aaron Judge. Um, he's a big guy, 6'7", uh, 275 is what uh, MILB has him listed at, and um, he's a first-round draft pick in 2013. A guy, a huge guy with you know some obvious power, and he hit a ball this past uh, this past weekend at the beginning of spring training that uh, hit the hit the scoreboard. So I'm not sure exactly how far. It was listed at, but it was an absolute bomb. And so um, in this particular swing, he does a ton right. Uh, he does a lot that's going to serve him well and help him hopefully be you know, a, a catalyst in the middle of the Yankees lineup. Uh, you know, Just looking at his numbers heading into uh, you know, this season, um, it looks like he, he's got some pop. He's, he's hit 20-plus home runs a couple times, high teens in the, in the home runs. I think that, that number should go up. Uh, significantly, and his average has been okay. Uh, he's hit, he had one season where he hit over 300, uh, another one where he hit 270. Uh, he didn't hit for a great average in limited time in the major leagues last year, but he did hit four home runs in, in 27 games, so that's not a not a bad rate. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at his swing, uh, and, and at the end today, at the end of the, the video, you know, like I'm doing in all my breakdowns now, uh, I will show you his swing fluidly without stopping, without drawing on it. So uh, if you're just looking to see his swing in full, go ahead and, and go to the end of the video if you don't want to hear me talk. So here is Aaron Judge, and, and i got a side view and a front view loaded up here. Here's the side view, and what you're going to see is the camera moves a little bit here. So I can't really use um, circles on the video, or else it, it, it kind of messes it up when the, the camera moves. But we're going to use frame of uh, you know reference points in the stand. So you're going to see this guy right here. Uh, it looks like he has some sunglasses on, got a hat, kind of sitting in the the aisle of the row. Uh, so th that's where uh, Aaron Judge's head starts, and so he does a really good job of creating an upward angle in his stride uh, for his swing. And, and what I mean by that is, is if you watch his head, his head is going to work back as he goes into his initial lift you can see his head moves behind this guy right here okay but he does a good job of keeping his back knee inside his back ankle so he doesn't get too far back to where his lower half is going to get stuck so his back knee is still inside now if you watch his head it, it is going to come back forward all right but it's not going to come past that guy's head again so it really just comes back to where it started all right so let's do the same exercise with his lower body let's see where he starts so he's going to start here uh, I'm just going to leave my red cursor there so it moves back a little bit and then he moves forward some so again the camera moved a little bit so it's right about the middle of that middle of those stairs or, or to the edge of the stairs but you can see that his his back hip his right hip has really moved forward now so that when he lands he's actually over here in the stands so again his head came back to where it started but his back hip really moved forward so what that's created for him is this slightly backwards angle. Okay, and that's even just into his, that's probably when he's really in the ground right there. But you can see this kind of backwards angle of his spine where his head is more over his back hip. And so what that's creating is the ability for Aaron Judge to keep his head totally still, but it creates this upward swing pass. He's creating space for his barrel to turn around his body and make really good contact with this lean back in his spine. So if his head were to shoot too far forward, or his lower, if his lower half stayed back too much, uh, he wouldn't have been able to create this again this angle here through his his torso. Again, that allows him to turn the barrel deep behind him and then clear space to turn up uphill very nicely and, and deep. So that's a really important move. So this is the concept of you know staying back up top you know relatively while letting his lower half go forward in a calm manner that's going to allow him to be very adjustable um, but that's also going to, uh, to to again create that angle for him to to swing upward and create a little momentum in his lower half so let's check out some of the the things past um, past that foot landing so right as he's going to land right right here you're going to see his back knee turn in right you're going to see his shoulders are still back you're going to see his belt has started to open up some. His hips are really going to come upward now. They're going to rotate upward. His shoulders are going to do a really good job of tilting down. So the back side goes down, front side goes up. So you can still see here how how open he is in his, in his lower body, how closed he is up top. His shoulders have tilted, but they haven't turned yet. So he has great separation. And now his back shoulder is going to drop and come uphill through, the, through contact. 
um, and, and that's going to allow his barrel to come into this really nice Nike swoosh shape up through the ball, and he absolutely demolishes it. So, again, he's a big guy, you know, 6'7", 275. That's a huge human being, but he does a phenomenal job of getting everything he has behind this ball. Um, so he actually, in this particular swing, is moving like a guy who's a little bit smaller um, and, and producing a lot of force through it. So, you know, we'll get into some more of the specifics in just a minute, but again, just to, to recap what I've already said, so his lower half really works out, his head stays back relatively, creating a great angle for him to turn upward, the sequence of rotation is really good, starting from the ground up, hips and shoulders separate, coming in a nice upward path through the ball, um, and, and really crushing this ball up the scoreboard. Now let's take a look at his upper body really quick, and so, um, you know, just into his stride here, one of the things I want you to notice is how he's loading pretty continuously into his turn. So he's kind of moving that knob down toward the catcher, right? But it's not he's, he's not moving it and stopping. So he's pulling that shoulder blade back. We call this the row move of his back shoulder. So he's rowing back, rowing back, rowing back, but it's not stopping, right? So he's, he's just kind of continuing to pull back slowly. The, it's never really stopping until he decides to go, and then it just flows right into his swing. So... He doesn't, uh, he doesn't have to start from a totally dead stop position. He can kind of have a little movement into it, and that's going to help him flow right into his swing with some energy. Now watch how his front elbow is down and his back elbow is up. So he does a really good job of working his upper body in a unit together. So front elbow is pointed more down, back elbow is pointed more up. And what we're going to see is as he rotates and as he turns, they're going to switch. So watch this front elbow, okay? His front elbow works up with his front shoulder. Okay, that's a really important move that a lot of hitters fail to do, and it's why he's able to keep his hands so high in his turn. Because everybody's back elbow and back shoulder drops as they swing. Everybody. I've never seen a hitter try to swing where their back elbow uh, doesn't drop, right? So <clears throat> the big key is that the front arm goes away from it up with the front shoulder instead of working down. So that allows him to rotate the barrel starting behind him. The hands kind of work uh, or rotate in place so the the um, top hand is, is kind of turning back while the front arm is turning up okay so it's it's a kind of a circular rotation there but again it's in place so the the knob and the hands are staying high and then he's able to have a really tight turn through contact and, and it's not um, he's not stiff with his barrel he's turning it and then letting it go almost like he's trying to throw the bat up through the ball so he's turning it tight but then he's letting it go through contact so he doesn't roll over at all he has great extension after contact right and, and so again this isn't a push though it's more of a turn to like a throw up through the ball and again you can see all the weight finishing on the back leg you know he, again he's a big guy if his weight were on his front leg he wouldn't be able to ro roll over this front ankle and, and be okay but he is because his weight's over his back leg and I see a lot of guys do this with their front ankle and it's not a big deal uh, simply because their weight doesn't really finish on their, their front leg it finishes on their back leg you know as he's um as that front arm's working up and those hands are staying high, that really creates the ability for that good swing pass. So that's really important. Um, and then, you know, with the lower body, watch how he's able to thrust his back hip and back leg up and forward. And watch how his back foot actually comes off the ground just slightly. But if you really watch it, it doesn't just stay still. He actually pulls it forward. And again, part of that comes from him creating space for his back foot to be pulled forward because his hips were able to work out at the very beginning because he unweights his back foot by letting his hips and his lower body move forward while his upper body stays back and then he creates that upward turn to pull that back leg through slightly as he keeps his head still nice continuous turn never stops his his swing at all very fluid all the way to his finish you can see that number 99 at the end finishing all the way through head still um, and again he has that back slightly backwards lean as he finishes so it's a really really good swing right here um, I'm going to show you a little bit from the front view now okay what I see so um, one of the things that I, I like about watching the front view of hitters is getting to see the timing with the pitcher so watch how early Aaron Judge picks his leg up okay so he's up super early so his legs at the top of his kick well before the the pitcher releases the ball so you know Aaron Judge doesn't know where this ball is going whether it's inside or outside or fastball or changeup he doesn't know so his leg is just up and what you're going to notice is he's not up early to rush forward with his with his upper body and like we saw in the side view is his his head moves very minimally he's up early so he's reading the pitch reading the pitch reading the pitch you know here he's you know he still doesn't know what's coming the ball's still in the guy's hand so it might look right here like oh well he might get his foot down 
early, and a lot of coaches teach that. You know, they say foot down early, foot down at, at pitch release, but that's not what's happening. Watch how Judge kind of hovers off the ground. You see that? So he's off the ground, but again, he's moving, but it's very slowly off that back leg. It's, his hips are, are moving forward very slowly while his head's just getting back to that position that it really started in. He's just hovering, hovering, hovering until the pitch gets in there, and at that point, that's when he decides to turn uh, his, his lower body. So the, the ball is actually very close to him right here. So right there, boom. That's when his front foot's in the ground. Look how close the ball is to him. So if your coach is telling you to get your foot down early way back here, you probably shouldn't do that because that's not what the best hitters in the world are doing. So, you know, foot down, uh, foot up early, but foot down late is something that we really want to teach here and uh, we see with the best players, okay? Now, again, that continuous rowing motion that I showed you from the front, or from the side, you can see that from the front now. So he's pulling back, pulling back, pulling back until it's time to go. And then he rows that back shoulder back and then it goes down. You can see that. So it goes back and then works down as the front shoulder works up. Okay. Now I mentioned his hand staying really high. So watch how his hands stay at chest height here. The knob's at chest height and it just stays there. So it rotates. He's rotating the knob, right? But it's staying at that same height all the way through. So you know, even on this relatively higher pitch, his back shoulder has dropped. His front arm is in line with his uh, with his chest or with his his spine. It's, it's perpendicular to his spine. Um, he's really turned his wrist to let the barrel out, but he's not driving or pushing the knob. He's rotating the knob until it gets to a, a certain point where he can then rotate his wrist to get the barrel behind the ball. So it's a very tight turn. He doesn't let his barrel out too soon to where it comes way out and around. He does a really good job of having a tight turn to this pitch so he keeps his barrel by his shoulder as he starts to rotate that knob and then snaps his wrist so that the barrel is in line with his forearm you know right around contact and then he just again throws that barrel up through it releases the the barrel up with his whole body behind it <clears throat> and this position at contact is really important to see because he's really supporting his barrel well okay so like if you're an uppercut punch or uppercut uh, throwing uppercut punch as a boxer you know, you're going to keep that hand with the back shoulder uh, and take all your energy through that guy that you're punching. Same thing here with a hitter. You know, his hands are going to stay really high, connected to his back shoulder, and then it's only you know through contact that he's releasing those arms and that barrel up and out. A uh, very good swing path, finishing up through it. So again, there's a lot of things here with uh, with Aaron Judge that that you know encourage me going into the season. I think he can obviously be a very powerful guy. You know, Joe Girardi. Um, was saying that you know all he really has to do is put the barrel on the ball and he's going to be fine because you know he he is so big and so strong and in my opinion at, at least from this particular swing he has a great swing so you know he's a guy who I think really just needs to focus on the accuracy side of things and just stay within his swing so uh, there's definitely an approach side of things where he has to make sure that he's swinging at good pitches and um, he's probably going to get a lot of off speed pitches being a bigger guy so just learning how to be controlled and calm and accurate. Uh, is the biggest key for him, but you know, as long as he puts a relatively good swing on the ball, I mean, he's going to hit a ton of home runs. So, um, as we're finishing up here, like I said at the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and, and show you the front view, kind of fluidly through his swing, so you guys can see it a couple times. I know a lot of people like to to see it, not just you know in stages, frame by frame, but you know the movement all the way through it. And so I like to look at that as well. So I'll show you guys that one more time from the front view, and then we'll go to that side view. Alright, so let's go to the side view now, and again, we'll just go fluidly through this swing, say three times, really, really good swings, just watch how the, the lower body and the upper body are, are coordinated with one another to, to launch that barrel behind him toward the catcher and then up through the ball. It's really, really impressive how much of his body he's getting behind this ball. And that's why it goes so far. So when guys are <clears throat> are hitting balls that clear the fence by, you know, crazy amounts, it's usually because they're they're performing a very very efficient swing. Um, and this is probably one of the best swings Aaron Judge has ever taken. So his job and, and his goal is to to repeat that swing and um, you know to get pitches where he can perform this swing and, and drive up through the ball and see how many home runs, see how many doubles he can hit this season. 